Hi, I'm Ira Block, Sony Artisan of Imagery. In this video, you will learn about the key components of a photo, including light and dynamic range. For me and for you, I think it's very important to work at a really high shutter speed. Even when it's not that dark, even if you're in a market like I was here, I like to shoot at ISO 800 or 1000, so I again can work a decent shutter speed when I'm shooting someone and their head's moving like this. If you're at 125th, you're gonna see movement in the chin. So I like to be at least at a 250th when I'm shooting people. The five axis stabilization is terrific, and it's great at stabilizing you when you're holding the camera. But again, it only stabilizes you it doesn't stabilize the motion in your subject. So if you're shooting people moving, you need to be at a high shutter speed. And I think it's a mistake that most people make. They're afraid to move their ISOs up. And they'll say, hey, look, look at this great picture, ISO 200 or 400. And I look at the picture and it's blurred. Well, if the picture's blurred, it's no good. So you might as well take advantage of what these cameras can do. Move your shutter speed up. Going to 1,000, 2,000, 3,200 is nothing. Keep your ISO high so you can keep your shutter speed up. Keep your lens open more. Don't worry so much about depth of field in most pictures. Worry about blur and movement. It's amazing that even at high ISO, the Sony cameras have an incredible dynamic range. I did a series of these ballet dancers in an old house in Cuba, and I just found some interesting light. And in this image, I've got sunlight coming through the doorway. Her dress is not blown out. The background has incredible detail and her face has incredible detail. The dynamic range just keeps pictures alive. I could never have done this shot in the days of film, nor could I have done this shot five years ago with another digital camera. Another shot in this old house was in this bedroom. I took both these pictures with my go-to lens, the 24 to 70, and I turned a fluorescent light on that was behind the bed, and yet, the light source, the available light, the colors, the dress, the white of the bed, everything has great detail. Nothing's blown out, nothing's overexposed. I saw this great scene on a mountaintop in Bhutan. I like the tree and I like the stupa at this monastery. Good mountain range in the back. Suddenly I get lucky. A nun starts walking on the pathway. And again, the dynamic range of the sensors makes it possible I've got some detail and you can see the shape of the mountains in the back. Do you see detail in the stupa? You see a little bit of detail in the nun and nothing's out of range here, it's great. It's important for me to have this dynamic range. Now there are some situations I shoot in where I'm controlling the light. But a lot of situations, if I'm shooting something really natural light, I need that dynamic range. I need to be able to get information in highlights. I need to get information in shadows. And it's important for me to be able to do that. I believe the Sony cameras have 14 stop dynamic range, which is just phenomenal. I love working with people, but of course I need to shoot landscapes to complete my story. So in my landscapes I try to include people, but I like to shoot landscapes that also have some sort of mood. I like to shoot more into the light, and I like to use atmospherics. Now this image has a real mood to it. Sun rising, fog coming off the water, and a boat going through the river. Behind the boat, 
You get this nice wake going through the water. You get to see the fog more. It's a great mood picture. Again, the dynamic range of the Sony sensors makes pictures like this possible. Even though it's a sort of silhouette, I'm getting detail in things that are unbelievable. You could look at the boat and there's a little reflection of the boat in the water. The sun reflecting in the water has detail in it. The trees in the background have detail. The shape of the house is defined really nicely. Even though it's dark against the dark mountains, it still defines itself. My ability to shoot these moody scenics and landscapes is possible now with this great dynamic range. Working at night or at dusk or at sunrise or dawn is another good time to shoot these landscapes. Here's the Fort El Moro in Havana and it was catching some natural light along the side of the wall that was warm and contrasted with the blue light of the sky made for a great picture. Plus, I've got a nice angle of the fort coming to me. I've got a point in the background showing the lighthouse. All these different elements add up and create a nice image. With these night shots like that fort picture, I'm always looking for a source of light that gives me some contrast, some difference. It's about two o'clock in the morning, I got back to my hotel getting ready to go to sleep and I look out my window and I see this aurora. Now, across the street from my hotel was a house that was getting a red glow from the hotel's neon sign. And I was able to get a shot of the aurora and the red house. So in this case, my light contrast is making this photo work. The reds and the greens give incredible contrast to the situation. I'm aware of light, I'm aware of the color of light. I like to do night shots with stars. Here I'm in the Himalayas and I was shooting at a slower shutter speed. Now you could see it's a slow shutter speed because the stars are moving. Well, actually the earth's moving and the stars seem to be moving. And the clouds going over the mountain peak are also getting a little blurred from the slow shutter speed. But if you don't want the stars to have the appearance of moving, you've got to shoot a little differently. Like in this photo in Mongolia. It was a beautiful clear night in Mongolia and the Milky Way was rising. I set up my camera, but again, I didn't want to do just a shot of the sky. I needed an anchor in the foreground. So I put this yurt in the foreground. Now the yurt was pitch black. How was I gonna get color on it? I took a flashlight and I, during that 30 second exposure, I just painted light onto the yurt. So now I've got the yurt and a beautiful Milky Way. But am I finished? Not really. I had planned the shoot to finish before the moon came up. The moon is too bright and the Milky Way disappears from your eyes. I was packing the cameras up and I looked off to the side and I saw this brilliant glow coming up over the horizon, almost like a sunrise, but it was the moon rising. And I noticed on the yurt, the moon was putting a golden glow. I took a few frames and then the moon actually popped up and the Milky Way disappeared. And this picture has this beautiful golden glow. You could even see on the horizon a bit of a glow. The moral to the story, nature does a better job of lighting than I do. Here's a shot of Manhattan at night with the Empire State Building. Now I don't shoot at the dark of night. I shoot after the sun sets. There's about an hour of time when the sky gets this nice blue color and you could start seeing differentiations in the clouds. And also, there's still enough light in the sky that it helps outline the buildings. So there's a perfect time to shoot. Early in the morning, right before the sun comes up or late in the afternoon, right after the sun sets. This is an unusual event. I was shopping on 6th Avenue in Manhattan 
and I walked out of the store and I saw this fantastic sunset. I had my Sony RX100 version 4 in my pocket. When I'm not carrying my professional cameras with me, I at least have the Sony RX100 version 4 with me. It's a terrific piece of equipment. It's amazing I was able to get this shot with it. And what's the best camera? It's the one you have with you. In this video, you learned about the key components of a photo, including light and dynamic range. Keep all this in mind, keep practicing, and you'll take better pictures.